Okay, so it's 6 a.m., like 6.05, and I just got back from a four-day bike trip in 96-degree heat. Uh, recovered from that, and so now I'm headed out to a place in western Tokyo called Sagamihara uh, to visit a farm called Kasamatsu Farms. Uh, which I've been hearing the name around town recently. Seems like a really cool spot and um, a really great learning experience about how to do the off the grid stuff. And I do mean off the grid, it's, it's pretty, it's really out there. Looking at a map, it's, I think there's like two buses there a day, which is one reason why I'm leaving at 6, 6 a.m. Because if I don't get there, leave now, the only other time that I can arrive is I think at like 2 p.m. or something. Um, but anyway, let's go see what the uh, really Inaka life is like out in Sagamihara at Kasamatsu Farms. fucking clue. <laughs> uh, this is, what's the station's name? Oh, we just got off. We're in Okumagino. Uh, headed to the, uh, what is it? Casa... Let's go check the place out. Alright, this place is very much off the beaten path. So, we're going to go on a little bit of an adventure. Which, of course, is exactly what I want to do. So, I'm happy with that. Japan's kind of full of sounds in the summer. Like that <laughs> fucking semi or a cicada. Those ones are good. There's this one that I'm trying to figure out recently. Of like I don't know what to call it, and I can barely like mimic the sound. <laughs> so there's a bit of a insect mystery and nobody seems to know what to call that thing too so it's just this really kind of eerie sound that occurs in the forest usually accompanied by cicadas but it's much different and really i don't know it sounds like for some reason to me it sounds like the wind hike to the what is that story called? Okuno Hosomichi Long Long Road to the Interior by who is that? Basho Matsuo? I haven't thought about that dude in a while. But I guess this is kind of the place to do that, huh? the chickens. Oh snap. That's legit.
So I'm guessing all this foundation was here. No, nothing. Are you kidding me? None of the stonework and... <laughs> I mean, this is nothing. Come look at the front of it. So all the trees that I had cut down, and basically I had talked to a lot of builders and carpenters, and the skill level is so high, but it's hard to find um, somebody who's willing to like work with amateurs to do something like yeah. this, especially with the limited budget that we had. Right, Everybody right. was like, ah, Mujida, it's not yeah, possible, yeah, yeah. you know? I had like a floor plan, and I had an architect who had helped me just to write it up to submit the um, for approval. Right, right. Um, and then the builder looked at all the materials and the logs that we had and made markings where all the joints need to be made. Mm -hmm. And then me and the woofers and the volunteers did all the um, the joinery just with chisels and chainsaw. Holy shit. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, there's not like a huge difference between someone who's practiced their whole life and someone who's just coloring within the lines. Yeah. So there's lots of little like in consistencies like that. But, but it's it really doesn't matter. Structurally it, yeah. sound. Oh no, structurally it's like way over spec. Awesome. Good. Like, like, I mean, these, the size of the material is huge. Yeah. And it's not even designed for st anything like that. And yeah. Uh, and I, I hadn't had any experience doing construction or contracting. Or That's anything. incredibly yeah. encouraging. Yeah. None. Right. I mean, I was a salary man being recruited from New Jersey. Yeah. I was paying someone to build me a house, and it, they told me it would take five years. Like, hell no. And they're happy, but. But if it's me... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just... I got the... It hit the edge of my learning curve in Tokyo. You know? Like, yeah. I felt like I had been learning a lot, and then the whole entrepreneurial thing, I wanted to set up my own company and do my own business, and I was really keen with that for a while. Mm. Um, and then I was just kind of getting burned out of the whole Tokyo scene first. Basically, the land looked like the, the property next to it. Like, it was just a flat... Yep, um, yep. ...gradual slope. So we raised it up quite a bit. So this is all your farmland? So no, this plot right here is not in the middle. This guy? This that is, is that is a pain in the ass. And then that it? one there with the greenhouse and the tomatoes. And mm. then going all the way down to those trees there is. And then there's another plot over there that, that is. But there's another plot in between that and this plot that's separating it. So it's like yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes. And and then, one day, one day, the, the house will be done. Well, what if it's taking you five years to get this far? Well, what do you this figure? is the final stretch, and compared to what we've been through, you yeah, know? like everything that we're working on now is just aesthetics. Mm. I mean, think about what it seemed like when we were just moving these rocks around on the ground. Yeah, you like just it's so have far away, and you know we're spending money to do all this, spending our budget, and there's still no like physical house on site. Right. So it's just like when, just when is it gonna happen? We're doing like on average fifteen. Ah, got gotcha. you like orders or yeah 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 when i say boxes and each order is different some people order like ichiman worth of stuff some people order like five thousand but the shipping is a thousand yen in general right so people are only going to order if, if there's enough if it makes products to, to order enough and that's the chicken coop over there yeah we just rebuilt it like last month oh really i had a mobile Coop system to try to track to them on the on the fields and stuff. Okay. And um, it was not it was not really possible. I mean, it, it is possible, but um, because of the slope of the location, yeah, and because of the property like not being contiguous, right, um, right, you wind up not moving the mobile coop because it's a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. and, and then all there. the benefits of having a mobile coop are kind of not really benefits. Yeah. Uh, so I decided to build that static coop and then create like a chicken run. I okay. walk over there really. Yeah. Oh, there's some of them. Yeah, somehow they're getting out. I'm still, like I said, we just built it a, a month ago, not even. Yeah. And we've been working on the walls the last few weeks, so I'm still trying to find tune it. I, I made like roll away nesting boxes. We just put this door on yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's not perfected yet. But the idea is the roll away nesting boxes. Yeah. So that they can lay the eggs and then they roll down here and then we don't oh, have wow. to spend time cleaning the eggs. Um, and then here's where our, our mud is, where our clay. That's version two of the chicken coop. Oh, is that the and then mobile? Version, there's another mobile <laughs> one down there in the in the run below this one. Yeah, yeah. 
So that's uh, yeah. Yeah, that one's still that good for one, show. Like you can you can load like ten chickens and then go to a different location with mm. that, and then. Yeah, I can imagine on here though, especially not on a road. This is not so bad. The third one that I built down there mm. is is a bit uh, heavier and can hold like thirty or forty chickens. <laughs> oh, I didn't even recognize that as something that you can carry around. See the wheels? Oh yeah. So it it moves. It would move really easily if it was flat. And are you like eyeballing this mostly, or are you kind of laying out proper plans? For what? Like building out this this chicken coop. No, kind of eyeballing it. Kind of. Uh... So this is the clay, and we had a group of students from America who were like Ryugakusei in Japan, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to let it ferment anaerobically inside the clay, the straw. Yeah. So you basically fill it with clay, fill it with water to mm -hmm. make like a tombo. Right. And then cut up rice straw like I was doing and then use your feet to mix it into the clay and then let that sit for like half a year oh. so that the straw inside the clay breaks apart into yeah. fibers right, right, and it becomes, right. it creates more tensile strength than if you just put the fresh straw in. So you right. add more straw to it when you're actually using the material. Yeah. But Oh, even prior to that, it's, it's still Prior has to that, hay. you have the clay, like you see how there's straw fibers in there, yep. but they're all kind of broken apart. Like here. So that's, that's the good stuff. That's the old school way of doing it, apparently. Huh. And... All right. So this place is pretty cool. We're making uh, it's Chikabe right now, and so we've got to uh, load some clay into a, uh, a truck and bring it back and then mix it up with sand with our feet.
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yelling for you. Hey, you whip swap, bro. Yep, it sure did. No. I love these old roads that are like, who designed, who thought this was a good idea? This is a terrible place to have a road. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Woo ah. We're just slab underneath the foundation. Yeah. No. So you burn, how do you do, because it looks pretty consistent, it looks like there was kind of a fire. <laughs> but I'm sure you, you know the technique, have you seen it before? No. Oh. It's a pretty, it's a, like a traditional technique, pretty common around um, Seto Naikai, like... Um, ah, okay, yeah. And then Shoku. Right, yeah. right, right. I didn't know that. It's called Yakisui. Huh. It's really easy to burn. You take three boards and make like a toddler own package. Okay. And tie it with two ropes at the top and the bottom mm -hmm. and then take like three or four newspapers and roll them up into a sausage and stick it in the bottom oh, and it. then just light it with a lighter and then this by the time the newspaper burns down yeah. inside of the boards are becoming the fuel and so oh. the whole board like the the tube just is like a flamethrower like right, shooting right, like a right. rocket out the, the top and with the two meter boards you can then flip it over in the middle of the burn mm -hmm. so it's like shooting fire out the side and you like just huh. rotate this thing and then you just pull the strings when you're done you have to be like adjusting the where it meets because if it like goes like that, then you get like unburned parts oh, on the right, edges right. of the of the boards, and then after you've done a few, you get a sense for how long like is too much and how how long is not enough. Right, right. And uh, then when you're done, you just pull the strings off, and the package just falls apart. And there's you someone know. there with a, a watering can to to just douse it. Huh. And so if you have two or three people. You can do like like half a housework in, in a day. Really? One person just making the packages, another person lighting them, and then a third person just dousing them, and you can just like pump them out. And it's, That's excellent. And that also, correct me if I'm wrong, kind of proofs the wood a little mm. bit against. No, yeah, that's the whole point of it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It weatherizes it, it um, that bugs and stuff, pest yeah. resistant. And you get this three dimensional like relief. Oh, cool. With, with how, this is from the cat scratching it. <laughs> the cat loves this spot. She just comes and, and scratches the corner. <laughs> but over, over like 50 years or something like that, it would turn like this, basically. Yeah, so just so the soft, the soft part of in between the grains yeah, yeah, yeah. gets worn out. Wow. Um, oh, this is a large... No, the second one is a different building. Oh, ah, okay, okay. And then we did like a Rotembra, wood-fired Rotembra. Jesus, man. Living the dream. <laughs>